Hi everyone, welcome to our week six video for maths. So as I mentioned last week, and hopefully you were able to navigate this, you need to skip to the part where it says Monday for the Monday's lesson, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday's lesson. We do not have a lesson on Friday this week because we have some activities for National Science Week. This is Monday's lesson. All right, let's have a look at our learning intention for this for this today's lesson. And what we're looking at this week is whole number. So we have already done some work in class on whole number. And if you can remember what we were doing with that is looking at greater than or less than, which was the two little arrows pointing the different ways to compare the numbers. So let's have a reminder of our place values. And we did do a fair bit of work on this, placing the numbers in these place values section. So the ones is a singular number like this, ones. If a number is falling into the second column here, it is the tens. If it's three, it's hundreds. Four is thousands. And then the fifth number is tens of thousands. So our learning intention is I can recognize, model, represent, and order numbers to at least 10,000. And we're going to unpack this little section here a bit more in the next slide. All right, so let's unpack our place value and whole number learning a bit more now. So underneath the place value descriptions here, I've got my table or my box where I'm going to our write in my number, which is written in words here. But before we do that, let's have a look over here and let's have a bit of a visual reminder of some of the resources we would use in the classroom if we were doing place value. So normally I would bring out a box or a container that has all of these things in here, the wooden block. And let's have a look at what we would have. So we would have our ones. And we usually sometimes we say, oh, can you get us 10 of those ones? Or we use the ones to add to a tens or something like that to make a teen number. We have our tens, which is the uh, blocks here in a row. Our hundreds is the big flat square one. And it's like a flat like that, like a piece of toast. Our thousands is a cube. And it's quite the big one that we normally have. And if we had tens of thousands, what we would need to do for that is we would need to have 10 of our 1000 blocks. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write our number into the blocks into the table here. And our number is 12,563. So what I'd like you to do now is pause your video and have a think, how would you write that number in numbers? 12,563. And I'm going to write it down into the box now as well. So we have 12, thousand five hundred and you can see that my when I'm saying five hundred it's falling into the hundreds box here and sixty which we know is six tens and then three so twelve thousand five hundred and sixty three and if we were going to draw that using our MAB blocks here what we would need is we would need to have ten of these cubes plus another two for twelve thousand so twelve of these cubes here the cube style we would need five of our hundreds squares, six of our tens rows, and then three of our little ones to make a representation of 12,563 using our MAB blocks as well. All right, let's write some more and practice some more together. So write the numerals to match these numbers and draw the MAB blocks to match. So what I want you to do is pause your video now and write down the numbers that for these words here and also draw your MAB blocks. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the answers, but it'd be really good if you can draw down your answers on a scrap piece of paper, just so you can check your understanding with me. So 900, we have nine in the hundreds column and then a zero in the tens and a zero in the ones there. And what I would need for this is I would need to then draw nine of my hundred squares, and it's gonna to be tr too tricky for me to draw nine with my pen on this PowerPoint presentation, but you would draw then nine MAB hundred blocks. All right, let's see for 4,000. So I've got a four in the thousands column, and then this one's pretty lucky is two. There's no, nothing in the hundreds, nothing in the tens, and nothing in the ones. And what I would need to draw for this is I would need to draw four of my cubes, for 4,000. Oh, that was a pretty good cube, actually. All right, 2,300. So for 2,300, I'm writing a two in the thousands column, a three in the hundreds column, a zero in the tens, 
and a zero in the ones. And for this, what I would need to do is I'd need to draw two of my thousands blocks and then three of my hundreds squares as well. The next one we have is 1,620. So one is going in my 1,000, which makes sense because it says 1,000. 600 also makes sense. It's going in the, six, the hundreds column. And 20 is the two is going in the tens column. And there is no, no ones for this, so we have a zero there. For this, we would draw a 1,000 cube, 600 squares, and two lots of our 10, uh, and I'll draw those ones because I haven't drawn them yet, two lots of our 10 columns like that for 20. All right, 10,000 is our last one, so I'm going to write 10,000 like that. And you'll notice that what I did is I left a bit of a gap between the 10 and the 1,000. So in Australia, we leave a gap for our numbers. We don't use a comma. So 10,000 is like that. And then what you'd need to draw, this one is a bit tricky, but hey, it's really good to practice our drawing of 3D shapes. You would have to draw 10 cubes to represent 10,000. All right, let's practice another couple together. So what we're using here is we're using a bit of partitioning to break down and remake the number. So we have 1,000 plus 500 plus 90 plus 7. So I know that that is 1,597 like that. If I was writing it over here, that means I have 1,000s, I have 500s, 9 10s, and 7 1s. And my number here, I write it again for my total, is 1,597. And you can see here that they've done the picture for us. So they've got a one block for a thousands cube. They have one, two, three, four, five hundreds squares. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tens columns, and then seven individual unit ones. All right, now it's your turn to have a go by yourself. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to draw these onto a piece of paper, or if you are having it printed for you, you can just fill it in. But if not, you'll need to draw your answers on a piece of paper today. You won't be able to do this straight into your Google Doc. And you need to fill in the answers, fill in the blanks for questions one, two, and three, just like I did on the slide before. Same as before for these questions, you need to fill in the blanks and please make sure you draw your MAB blocks. That's a really important step for these questions. All right, this is our optional challenge type of activity today. So what you need to do is read the instructions which say arrange the given digits to make a number that meets the given criteria. So you need to arrange the digits six, one and seven to make a number that falls between 161 and 169 and you have to use those digits there. So good luck with this as your optional activity if you choose to do it. This is Tuesday's lesson. All right, our learning intention for today is I can use place value to partition numbers of up to four digits. So partitioning a number is breaking it up into different parts. And we did that yesterday when we had our number such as 1,597 and we broke it up into 1,000 plus 500 plus 90 plus 7. All right, so let's begin with a bit of a warm up like we did yesterday. So we have our number written here in words, 3,250. What I'd like you to do is write down your number showing me your place value, your understanding of place value, and the MAB blocks that match it. So pause your video and do that now, and I will be writing the answer. So 3,250, I'm putting my three in the thousands box there. I'm putting my, oh sorry, my mistake, that's in the tens of thousands box. I'm putting it in the, the 3,000 in the thousands box here. So 3,200 is going in my hundreds and 50, I, that means I have five tens and zero ones. So if I was drawing the MAB box for that, what I would be drawing is I'd be drawing three of my cubes. So three cubes to represent thousands. I'll just do a times three. I'm sure you've done a great picture. 200, so we need two of them, and then five of our tens columns as well. 
All right, let's have a practice now of expanding or partitioning this number. So if we were in class, what we'd be doing is we'd have our whiteboards, we'd write down this number 4,527, and I'd be asking you to show me how you could partition or break up this number like we were doing with the questions we had yesterday. So thinking about how you can break up this number and partition it. So pause your video now and write it down, and then I'm going to do the answer. So we can partition that, this number by having 4,000 plus 500, or oh, sorry, that five was not very good, plus 20, plus seven. So that means I have four, thousands, five hundreds, two tens, and seven ones. All right, you want to expand your numbers for these questions for today. And because you can do this straight into your Google Doc, you may choose to do that. Or if you're working on paper, that's fine as well. You can write them on paper. But we're looking for you to write something like 5,000 plus 400 plus 30 plus 6 to show us your understanding of partitioning. And here are your questions continued. All right, your final set of questions today is I want you to identify the number that has been put in bold, which means that dark black writing. So 3,489, what is the value of the eight? It is a 10, so it's tens, eight tens or 80. So I want you to write those three things down like that for each of these numbers. So tens, eight tens and 80, you're doing that for the four, the nine, two, zero, and four in the other questions where they've been bolded. And your optional activity to, to complete today is if you click the link to this website from your PDF version of this video, it will take you to a little quiz you can do on place value. This is Wednesday's lesson. All right, so let's have a look at our learning intention for today. I can state the place value of numbers of up to four digits. I can partition numbers of up to four digits in non-standard form. So we're really going on from our learning from yesterday. So if you wanted to re-watch the video part the section from yesterday, that might be a good idea if you need to. All right, let's practice this together. So let's state the place value of, of each of, this num of these numbers. So we have our six and our six equals thousands or 6,000 or six thousands like that. So same as what you were doing yesterday. Our three equals hundreds, which is 300 or three hundreds. And our eight equals our tens, it's in our tens column, so I'm putting a T for tens, 80 and eight tens. And lucky last is two, our two is in our ones column, so we put in a zero for uh, an O for ones, and two, like that, and two ones. Right, so we're going on with the same activity from yesterday. You need to write down the value of these numbers that have been put in bold. All right, this time what we're doing today is we are partitioning our numbers, but I don't want you to do it the normal way. So normally for 3,917, we would have 3,000 plus 900 plus 10 plus seven. That's the normal way we've been partitioning and breaking it up. But what I want you to think about today is different ways you can partition and break up this number. So this is called non-standard partition. So you could break this number up into 3,900 plus 17, 3,000 plus 917, or 3,000 plus 900 plus 17. So I'm looking for different non-standard ways to break up and partition these numbers. Continuing on with these questions, it's the same instructions from before, partitioning these numbers in non-standard form. 
All right, your optional activity today is to find a creative way to represent place value. Here are some ideas. Now this one here, just to note, it says Cheerios, but you that's obviously an American term. You can use something like um, Fruit Loops or something else that has that looks similar to that so that you could make hundreds, tens and ones. You've also got the option of using the cups if you have some, or you could make something out of paper. It's up to you. Or you can think of your own idea. I'm sure you guys have other great ideas as well. This is Thursday's lesson. All right, what we're focusing on today is rounding numbers. So I can round numbers to the nearest 10, 100 or 1,000. We're just going to focus on tens and hundreds today, not thousands, just because we're starting out. So if the number is four or less, we round it down. If it is five or more, we raise the score, so we uh, round it up. So four or less, let it rest, going down. Five or more, raise the score, round it up. That's a little rhyme that you can use to help you remember. Okay, what I want you to start off with is by watching the video. So click the link from your PDF and watch the video, which helps explain how to round numbers. All right, let's have a practice of rounding these numbers together. So the first one here, we are going to round to the nearest hundred. So what we're going to look at is we are rounding to the nearest hundred. So in the video, the guy circled the hundreds there to remind him that that's what he's rounding to. He then did an arrow to have a look at this number here. So this number is a four, and we heard before, if it's four or less, we round down. So this means we would be rounding this to the nearest hundred, which would be 300. We're not rounding it up to 400, we're rounding it down to 300. So for our tens here, we're going to round this to the nearest 10. So he, we are circling the four here because we know that's in the tens column. And we're doing an arrow just because we're looking at the number five here. And remember, if it's five or above, we round it up. So 45 would be rounded up to 50. All right, now it's your turn to have a go of rounding these numbers to the nearest 10. So you're rounding them to the nearest 10. All right, and now what we're looking for is can you round these numbers to the nearest 100 this time? So rounding them to the nearest 100. And your optional activity to complete today is a colour by numbers sheet. So what you need to look at is for dark pink, it is a number that is two tens and three ones, which is 23. So wherever there's a 23, you'll be colouring that in dark pink. What I'll do is I will attach this to our Google Classroom as a proper attachment so that it's easier for you to print and complete if you'd like to do that. Hope you've um, enjoyed all your maths work this week and I'm really looking forward to seeing it and marking it. Well done.